personally, we never had an issue. Please don't take away, you know, our, our homes, our peace. My name is Henry Poshvis. My wife and I started daring 20 years ago. I was born actually right on Wolf Island. I have a turbine, T50. It doesn't uh, take up much space in my land. Uh, probably affects maybe one acre. And it helped me financially uh, boost my farm income, actually uh, make me invest more into my farm and what I did was tile drainage with it. So it's, it's been a win-win a, a for me. At first, we were always looking at them because they were right there in front of us. They're just, just so large, eh? Uh, and there was times where you can hear them and you'd, and there's times when you could see the flicker in the afternoon, they'd last for a few minutes, but uh, we're such a busy pace on this farm, we don't really pay a whole lot of attention to it. Um, so I never really found it an issue. I, I guess if you were just, maybe if you had a, a, less, uh, a less active life, you might just sit there, and especially if you didn't like it, you look at it and just brew to yourself just how terrible they are. But to me, it's like a truck driving down the road. Just, just another day. With dairy farming, the key to success is, is calving interval, and calving interval is 12 months. So if you run 13 months, you're not as efficient as a guy who's running 12 months. And that relies on your cows catching back in calf at 60 days. There's no scientific proof to say that, that uh, that's the case, but if a farmer's done it for 50 years and never had a problem, and then the wind turbines come in, and now he has a problem, the farmer's looking for answers, and nobody has them. I'm against having poor conception rates on, on farms when that's your livelihood. And I'm against the, the, the powers denying that it's an issue and that, that there's any connection, when, when clearly there is a connection. People may not understand it today, but there is a connection. My name is Katie Little, and it's been heartbreaking. The first few years, it was like kind of like a paradise. I would talk to my friends who were still in the Toronto area and be like, guys, you don't know what you're missing in the country. It's amazing. And uh, once the turbine fight started, it the community um, changed. The community dynamic changed. The, the home changed because it felt like more of a precarious situation. Are we going to be able to stay here forever or are we not? I would like the wind turbines to never come here. I think there's got to be a better place or a better energy solution. I think that this island is a treasure. It's the, the jewel of Lake Ontario and what the government and what the wind turbine companies are proposing to have happen here is a tragedy. Health risks of the turbines, um, well, my dad, he is, uh, has, a heart condition and has had multiple um, open heart surgeries and the stress of the turbines, um, the effects that it has with the noise that uh, affects your sleeping. There's those health risks, there's the health risks of like the toxins in the air. They want to put a cement batch plant just across the road here and just on the other side of that is a school where the people on the island, their kids go there and I was absolutely shocked when I went to um, the most recent tribunal and someone pointed out that there's nothing in the proposal about the fact that it's so close to a school. My name is Ava Little and I'm, uh, I've been living on this island for the last 12 and a half years. We moved here because it was a little piece of heaven. It was the most beautiful place that we thought we could raise children. And we were horrified when we found out a couple of years after moving here that these wind turbines were going to come. It was quiet beyond belief. Um, it's safe, it's clean. Um, it's an area that uh, where the community is very close. Um, I've always been of the mind that it takes a village to raise a child and the children of this community are uh, strong, successful. Um, they learn how to become good citizens and 
I wanted that to be a part of our child rearing. My name is Brian Little. Um, I've been living here on Amherst Island for 12 and a half years. Like the only people who want them here are the people who are going to benefit from them. Directly across the road from us is going to be their electrical substation. The problem with it being right here is that these things can be very noisy. Um, they're certainly not nice to look at and it's, we'll be looking at it right out our front door. And then beside the substation is the laydown area, which is approximately 20 acres of a construction site. That's where they're going to bring in all the trucks. That's where they're going to bring all the turbine pieces and everything else and lay it all out. I don't have a lot of money to, to uh, put in, but I've got time and talent that I can do. Being a photographer, there's an awful lot of pictures that need to be taken of different things, so I donate my time for that. 12 years ago, our plan was never to move again. This was our forever place, and now we may be driven away.